Plus Us presents the Baseball Together podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. And now, Baseball Together. Welcome back, baseball family, to another episode of the Baseball Together podcast. I am one of your hosts, Brig, and as always, I've got Brad here with us. Yeah, that's right. I'm here again. We today have a lineup for you that is just awesome. We're going to talk current events, which always includes Mookie Betts these days somehow. Then we're going to move on and we're going to talk about arbitration. Let's get into what that actually means. And then, of course, we have to talk about hats because spring training hats are out. And that's what we want to talk about. (laughs) That's right. Yeah, let's get into it for sure. Brad, tell me about Mookie Betts, bro. There's a three-way deal going down. Well, it's supposed to be going down, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we hope eventually, but there's been a there's there's a problem. Yes. Okay? There there's there's been a problem. And that problem is that this guy Bruzdal Gratterall, I think yeah. that's how you say his name. Oh, I don't honest. know. I Yeah, I don't know. I tried to look on baseball uh baseball reference where they have their um they have their pronunciation guides. And right. He hasn't played enough games to have a prince his name like on there with the pronunciation guide. <laughs> so nobody knows. I mean nobody. he has like point zero two six years of service time in the big leagues. So yeah. basically the Red Sox are getting an I don't want to say a nobody, but he hasn't had a chance to make himself a name in the big leagues yet. Certainly so, not at our level. We don't know anything about him. Right, yeah, and I'm sure there's some scout somewhere in the Red Sox organization who's like, oh, yeah, this guy's going to be great. But there's an issue with his physical. It's holding up the trade because that's part of every trade. They always have to have physicals. Like you'll hear sometimes this trade is is done pending physicals or whatever. Yeah. So we've got that to deal with. Um, totally. But then I think I think what happened, too, is that the, uh, the Red Sox uh, read a bunch of press and other stuff about um about like wow the Red Sox got fleeced this is not a good deal for them and now they've got a chance to kind of back out of this so they want to rework it is what it sounds like Uh, I don't know if they're going to be allowed to do that or not especially if he passes his physical like if they do it again and something comes back um or if they're going to say no we want more for Mookie Betts because he is worth more than that and as we all know he indeed is, for That's sure. That's what we've right? been saying. Yes. Yeah. I saw I this st- deal. I was like, what the freak is happening? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, the Red Sox, like, they got nothing back. Ugh. The Dodgers, you know, like, and and I want to, to me, like, looking at this trade, it was more about, like, when it actually went down, it's more about the Red Sox clearing cap space and getting David Price off the books, and Mookie Betts was the price. For yeah. getting price off the books, I guess you could say. Yeah. So wow. nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> so that's that's kind of what it was feeling like there, right? Yeah. No, I agree with you. So I don't know. It, it's still interesting, and Scott Boris, being who he is, stuck his nose in and everything because he is Gratterall's agent. Oh, he is. He said, oh. Yeah, he is. He said there was no issue, and of course, he said there's no issue. You know, because well, of course that's he's going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, right. Well, but, okay, yeah. but it does say something about this guy Gratterall if he's being represented by Scott Boris. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd put yeah. that on a scouting report. Yeah, <laughs> you it's almost true. have it's, to. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like those guys have a reputation for, I guess, their potential, their ceiling. I don't know. The the but, stables though of yeah. of of elitism. Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. That's yeah. exactly what it is. A stable of elitism. So, um, Tony Clark with the MLB said this needs to get resolved, like, ASAP. Yeah. He said this needs to be done in the next few days because this can't be dragging out. Basically saying, telling the Red Sox, you cannot be using this time to completely re- rework the deal. You agreed to the terms, figure it out. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Get a puppers and figure it out. Get a so, puppers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think that's really what's going on with, with all this right now, though. Yeah, I agree. But, so tell me about the Red Sox. They've hired this guy, Ron. I'm just going to call him Ronnie because <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce his last name. 
Do you? <laughs> I do. I, I had to look it up. Okay. And reading his name, I didn't know who he was. But then I looked at, like I said, baseball reference with their pronunciation guide. Yeah. Ron Renicky. Oh, Re- that's his name? Renicky? That's him, Renicky. Okay. So he was actually the manager of the Brewers before Craig Council. Whoa, okay. So, okay. So he's good. He's really good. And he was the bench coach for the Red Sox. Was he really? He was. That's where he came from. So uh, I think they're going to be all right. Yeah. I think they're going to be good. Yeah. I mean, at least yeah. they have a qualified person in the ship, running the ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is what we've been talking about. They're kind of steering a sinking ship right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what you said when you. When they when that trade went down, like what <laughs> sinking ship? Yeah, I know. that that is what it felt like. But I feel like this is a guy who's going to be able to right that ship. And I don't know if they'll contend for the AL East because they're kind of dumping some of their talent there. But yeah, I think Renegie's Renegie's got some got some respect on the clubhouse already. Well, I mean, so, you'd hope so. Um, I would think so. I mean, he was if I feel like the bench coach is one of those guys who everybody likes. And that's part of the reason they're the bench coach. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because yeah, totally. it, he, he's almost like the cool parent you can go talk to. That's because right. Because the manager's too busy. Yep. So, so I, I feel like that was a good hire for them. I think they did a, I think they did a good job with that. Well, we'll see how he makes the transition from the cool dad to the tough love dad. <laughs> yeah. You know, we'll see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll see. Because I bet that yeah. transition is really, really rough. Okay. Talking really quickly, let's get into – Let's talk. We got to talk more about the Red Sox because, yes, they've made a hiring decision, which I think is awesome, and yes, they're making trades, which obviously they had to do because they got money problems, and among other things. But what in the world is going on with Major League Baseball and this investigation? We can't forget about it. No, it, it's true, and and Rob Manfred said, you know, we're going to wrap that up here in about a week. Within the week, it should be wrapped up, and I sure hope Praise. so because it needs to be. <laughs> now, Manfred released a statement within the last couple of days, mm-hmm. and it said something like, we have every uh, authority or something. He used the word, we have every right to punish players. We, we can discipline players. Why mm-hmm. is he just now coming to this conclusion before they swing the hammer on the Red Sox organization, and he did not have that forethought and and clarity before he gave immunity to everybody on the Astros team. You know, I don't I don't know why he's just now coming out saying that. I do wonder if some of it uh, was. I wonder if he went and did some negotiating with the uh, with the players totally. union, and so he didn't before, but now he does. Have some why, of that power, why would right? you not before? Because you got to get the truth from guys, <sighs> you know. And and like, and like and like you said, that's that's a valid negotiating. Tactic, it is. Right? And they got the collective bargaining agreement going on, which we talk about all the time. And and the rule said, managers and executives will be the ones who are that's punished. right. So then Hank so. Aaron weighed in. Do you want to tell the world what Hank Aaron said for those that missed it? Oh, I would yeah, love to you tell what Hank Aaron yeah. said. Because <laughs> I have something to follow that up with. So Hank Aaron said anybody who was involved in sign stealing should be banned from the game for life. Whoa! Okay. Hammer and okay. Hank Aaron swings the hammer Dropping again. The hammer. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so I I saw that like I I think you sent it to me first yeah and then I saw on the score app which is where I get my news and the article that was attached to it to attach that quote on the score the feature image the image that you click on to get into the article was Hank Aaron presenting award an award to Jose Altuve I was like oh man what award is that so I looked at it and sure enough it's the Hank Aaron award and Brig do you know what the Hank Aaron award is is awarded for. Tell us, Brad. It's for the best hitter in each yep. league. So, Jose Altuve got the Hank Aaron Award as the best hitter in the American League. Do you know what year that was, Brig? 2017, Brad. 2017, oh. Brig. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. So, Hank Aaron definitely has a like a personal interest in this because he doesn't want a cheater 
getting an award with his name on yes. it. Yes. One that he presented to the player. Now, <laughs> I'm inclined to agree with him at that point. Yeah. I mean, if Hammer and Hank's going to drop the hammer like that. You're going to back him up. And it's, <laughs> I'm going to yeah. back him up for sure. But also, like, he, those guys, and here's the thing. Whit Merrifield said, was it this last week? He said, they stabbed other guys in the back because they took money. They took all-star positions. Like, they took a championship by cheating. Totally. Totally. And, man, the players have been outspoken yeah. on this. They have been angry about this. I Of course. I think that might be part of the reason that Manfred is finally able to punish, saying he's able to punish those guys, that he might have gone to the union. The union was like, no, everybody wants this to happen. Now, that's a good point I hadn't thought of, that the players are probably going to union officials saying, look, man, we'll build the gallows for you. you know, right? Like, mm -hmm. if, <laughs> if you give somebody some teeth, we will build the scat. We'll 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 get out there and build it. <laughs> That's yeah. That's a good really. point. I hadn't thought that about it that thought. way. Yeah, I, I I bet those guys are willing to like like. You want me to walk them up there? <laughs> yeah. Who needs who needs to pull the lever? I mean, I'll I'll do it, and I'll got volunteers. <laughs> you know? I will pull the lever, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think that's kind of where it's gotten with all of this. Yeah. I think you're right. Well, and sponsorship deals, and I mean, the list literally goes on and on. And then, you know, mm -hmm. I don't remember who it was, but one of the players came out and spoke about all of the video crew, all of the groundskeeping crew, all of the concessions mm -hmm. people, all of the front office personnel um, that are that are seasonal, and all of those people who get bonuses and get pay and, yep. you know, for, for extra work when they get playoff runs. Yep. Well, and part of that, I think they get part of that World Series bonus too. I think that trickles down. I think you're, that's exactly right. So, so yeah. I mean, this, if it, you look at it as broadly as you can, I mean, this affected a lot more than just the fans being upset and the players mm -hmm. uh, feeling like they were also cheated. I mean, like this, this just ripples. Yeah. yeah. Big time. It, it's much bigger than what we initially thought. Um, there's a lot more involved than we initially thought. And the the deeper and deeper I get into it with, with everything that I read and research with, with the whole science stealing thing, man, it like, it's, it's so bad. It is so it's bad. bad. It's so much worse than I initially thought it was. Yeah. It's, it's, awful. it's bad. And you know what? The one thing I think we're all going to take away from this and hopefully you guys watching and listening at home, will will get an idea of this as well. But what I'm seeing, kind of the paradigm shift I'm experiencing, is how wide this really does affect the world of baseball. Because we sit here and bang on the, let's call it a trash can, we bang on a trash can <laughs> of the integrity of baseball and the purity of the game and what, what do we do with statistics and how does that affect the Hall of Fame. But what it comes down to is so much more than that from the, from the moment people get paid or don't get paid all the way through to a 10 year later hall of fame potential. So I, I hope that, you know, we'll talk about this more obviously as the next investigations findings come out, but I'm, I'm hoping that everyone else's understanding of this is expanding as well. So yeah. Brad, yeah. <clears throat> one of the things I think we ought to talk about is arbitration. It's kind of, uh, a, an often misunderstood part of the game. I think people need a, a little bit of a better understanding about it. And the, the reason I'm bringing it up right now is because Jock Peterson, I think today, law, it's Friday, um, Jock Peterson lost his arbitration hearing. Mm -hmm. um, now, yeah. that puts the owners, the CEOs and owners, three to zero so far this season. And we have a total of 15 players who are eligible for arbitration and have taken it all the way to an official third-party decision maker. So, mm -hmm. so let's tell let tell me, Brad. Like, what do you understand about arbitration, and and what gaps do you have in your understanding? And let's answer. Let's talk about it. Let's help people understand what it means. So I, I actually feel like I have a pretty good understanding of of arbitration, but it's only been because of this year. Yeah. To be honest with you. Um, 
And really what it is is the, the team comes with their number they think the player is worth uh, for the next year or two. The player comes with his number that he thinks he's worth for the next year or two. They go into a room. They argue their, their sides just like in a court yeah. case. And then the arbitrator picks one of those two numbers. He does not pick a number in the middle. It's not a negotiation. It is an arbitration. Right. So they pick one of those two numbers, and either they go with the player's number and the player wins, or they go with the team's number and the team wins, and and that's the new contract for a year or two, depending on what they decide, yeah. what the arbitrator decides. Yeah. So players are eligible to seek an arbitration hearing if they have three or more, but less than six years of major league service time, like mm-hmm. actual service time, yeah. okay? Um, and they're as long as they're not already under a contract. So this comes up for guys who are just reaching that that magical six year mark in their service time. That's when this starts to happen. Well, and then after that third year is when it starts. To yeah, happen. exactly. So like like guys like Chris Bryant um, would be an arbitration guy. Um, George Springer was one a couple of years ago. And I didn't. And before that was before I really understood arbitration. He took a deal. I was like, "Oh, is that a market correction? No, it's just avoiding arbitration." Yeah, yeah. is all it was. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so here's here. Let me just explain to the people listening and watching. This is what, this is what happens, in the barest bones terms. The, like Brad said, the players come to the club and they say, "I think I'm worth more," and the club says, mm-hmm. "I don't think so." And they argue, and the agents argue, and everybody's now, like, upset a little bit, you know? And if they mm-hmm. got to go all the way to an arbiter, if they've got to bring in a, a, a third party that does really doesn't care, then what ends up happening is often described as a character assassination, okay? I think um, Trevor Bauer, I think, last season is the one that kind of, described it as a character assassination but the point is you get in this room kind of like mediation in a divorce you get in this room and you start talking about all of the things that are wrong with the other side (laughs) right so the the team says no we don't think this player is worth this much because of this this and this and it can be on the field it can be off the field it it you know it knows no bounds so trevor bauer being the example again his social media activity is very interesting and he has a history of being somewhat inflammatory. And what we ended up with in that arbitration hearing is that the ball club said, well, we, you know, they brought that to light. They they brought that to the negotiation table. We don't think that this increases your value. We actually think this decreases your value. He says, well, what does that matter? It's off the table. It's off the field. That isn't, it shouldn't matter. And the, the club says, well, but it does because it affects our brand and it affects your personal brand, which affects our brand, et cetera. So I remember when Derek Jeter, yeah. this is why I learned about arbitration when because Derek Jeter went through arbitration. And he said, well, this is what I'm worth. You know, this is what I have provided so far. And this is what I'm expected to provide. I'm still growing. I'm still developing. I'm still learning, et cetera. And the club said, uh, no. I don't I don't think so. Now, the club's motivation is to spend as little as possible and get as much as possible right. out of it, right? That's business. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cuz to them, it's business. And to young players who don't maybe, maybe not, but to some of them who are still living this sort of dreamscape idea of professional baseball the, those uninitiated into the business side of it that's cold and calculated i think they get their feelings hurt a lot and i think that yeah i could see I, that. how could yeah. you not right how could you not sit there in a room with the people arguing on why about why you're so great and then across the table the people you're employed by who recruited you and tell you every day how great you are all of a sudden coming to you and telling you all of the things they found that are wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and maybe for the first time ever that, that, that this is yeah. coming oh, yeah, to you. Yeah. You, you know yeah. what I mean? I mean that so so what ends up happening is you end up with an alienation. You end up with resentment. You the, it damages the relationship between the ball club and the player and then things can get really really ugly. It happened with Derek Jeter. He stayed in New York, which was amazing. Because he walked out of that arbitration hearing scarred. 
I've got his book right here. And he's Oh, yeah, nice. He's he he was legitimately upset. I mean, rightly so. Because he plays for the most shrewd often, not always, the yeah, most shrewd yeah, team there is uh financially. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, I just think that so there are 15 guys up for arbitration right now. It happens every year. It's in February. The guys that take it that far, uh, they, they have their hearings or cases or whatever heard in February every year. So far, the players are 0-3 against the teams. So Jock Peterson just lost his arbitration hearing with the Dodgers, which is interesting because he's up for trade right now. Then we got Jose Barrios with Minnesota Twins. He lost. And Shane Green lost his arbitration hearing with to the Atlanta club. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. Yeah. And I feel like guys are usually going to lose their arbitration. Um, just beca- like unless they come out and they have monster seasons, right? Sure. Because, because I feel like at that point, clubs are going to be like, clubs and arbitrators are going to be like, well, no, you're still like you're still on that that rookie deal, and and you've still got stuff to live up to, you yeah. know, and and yeah, I, I, and there are a few there are a few guys who win, and I, I'm always surprised, honestly, when guys win their arbitration cases because it rarely happens. Yeah, I am too, but I'm always cheering for it. You know, I'm always like, yeah, 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 because yeah. yeah, yeah, he's sure. going in there with just he, him and his agent, right? Mm-hmm. Typically, it's just a very small team against a very large, well-established, very experienced team on mm-hmm. the other side of the table. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's interesting. Um, it affects baseball in a lot of ways. A lot of guys will avoid arbitration at all costs. Some teams will too, but but you get like uh, you, you know you get a guy who decides to keep the romance alive. I guess is the best way to say it. And he'll take a low ball deal in order to make sure that the relationship isn't damaged. Yeah. Yep. Happens all the time. Yep. It sure does. So anyway. Well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a break. And when we get back, we're gonna start talking about spring training hats. Yeah. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if I never get back with me. Root, root, root for the home If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game shop kids baseball shirts at nineplusss.com welcome back to the podcast baseball family like we said we are going to get into uh, talking about spring training hats because we love hats as evidenced by episode 7.5 hats 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 we are in love with hats like the ones on our head. But anyways, before we do that, I want to do a segment I haven't done in a long time. We call, Where Did the Team Name Come From? All right, Brady, are you ready? I'm ready. It's been too long, Brad. Okay, so I, I was kind of thinking about this today, which team I wanted to do. And um, in our in our team names episode, episode 12, feels like forever ago right now. Um <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Feels yeah. like we just did that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, we talked about some team names that we didn't like because we weren't sure where they came from. Well, one of those team names is the Pittsburgh Pirates. And the other thing I was thinking about this is we have to get somehow figure out a way to get the Pirates into every episode. I don't know why, but <laughs> it just kind of works out. <laughs> it does. It, it's eerie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I figured it this is, is... Not, it is unplanned, by the way. <laughs> it is unplanned. Uh, this time, I'll be honest, it was planned because I, <laughs> I wasn't going to insert the pirates in the uh, in the episode. But here we go. This time, I'm inserting the pirates into Love this it. episode of the Baseball Together podcast. So how the Pittsburgh Pirates got their name. Are you ready, Brig? Oh, so ready, Brad. OK, here we go. So in 1882, they were known as the Alleghenies, right? Because in episode uh-huh. 12, I joked, what, the Pirates of the Allegheny? So the Allegheny only makes sense. 
right? Ah, yes. So in the 1890s is when their nickname changed. They were, it says, this is according to um, rd.com. I don't know what that is or where it is, but it seems legit. They said they earned a new nickname, the Pirates, after they lured or stole a few players from rival clubs. So Whoa. A little, bit, a little bit of piracy going in free agency before free agency was really a thing. Okay. So that's where the Pirates get their name. It's just a nickname You're- and it happened to stick. You're kidding me. Isn't that so funny? <laughs> That's a lot like the Oakland uh, Elephant logo. It is. It exa- is it exactly like the Oakland Elephant logo. See, a nickname this, that I, stuck. I love that. Me too. I read that. I was like, okay, that's fantastic. That's up there with the best names in Major League Baseball. Now I have to amend my list one of these days and take the Pirates off the worst names because that's awesome. Well, yeah. Now, give, well, and given context, right, that's the – best yeah context yeah. always juicy makes it juicier it does it does truly mm. so oh that so was well there's played, your pittsburgh sir. pirates oh, right. i love it should we get into these spring training hats yes yes uh, we should <laughs> um since we were talking about the a's i'm going to go ahead and lead off with my fifth okay. my fifth favorite of the 2020 spring training hats because it happens to be the Oakland A's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we talked about that white elephant. They used the white elephant on the hat. So yes, what they, they did. did, for anyone who has not seen these hats yet, what they did was they took a logo, uh, a version of their logo, put it on the front, and then there's a logo on the side, on the right side of the hat. We have ours on the left side right here. I have the 9 plus us. There's on the right side. Okay. Now what they did Correct. with and then what they did with that second logo on the side of the hat was they kind of did like an overlay of that of that logo on the front with the other one behind it with that second logo behind it. So what the A's did was they have the white elephant with Oakland behind it and it looks awesome. It looks so that, cool. It's cool. that was my number 6. I oh, you was told it? me I yeah, you told me to limit it to five, and I was like, well, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I like it. I think it's really cool. I love the white elephant. Um, the Oakland looks cool behind it. I mean, the only reason it's number five is because I'm not crazy about the color green for right. some reason. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I like that hat a lot. I'm going to jump, Brad. I'm jumping across the bay. Oh. Oh, my number five. <laughs> My number five is the San Francisco Giants. <laughs> it now I had this was so hard because these these logos, the the way they went about inlaying the logos was like not my favorite thing. I'm gonna be right. honest with you. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Because some of them In, the reason I wanted to do the ones that I didn't like was because some of them just looked bad, straight up bad. No, that is so generous. <laughs> some of them are so terrible i thought whose idea was this to like the entire concept itself yeah. drowned in all of the bad so i thought okay and my wife brought up the point actually she said well okay listen they have they have to come up with a new spring training hat and redesign everything every year with the same product this they have the same colors they have the same logos to work with same material every year they got to come up with something new i'm like oh well then i tip my hat literally because (laughs) that i can see that being a very challenging thing so despite it not being my favorite thing i'm sure there are tons of people out there that love it and i found a lot to agree with so san francisco giants you got to take the whole hat into consideration which is okay. what my point was originally. <laughs> like, I'm not crazy about the inlay, <laughs> but if you take the whole as it's all working together, it's awesome. I love a jet black hat. I love when you get the eyelets and the what's the button called? You have a name for it, Brad. The squatchy. The squatchy. Yeah. You get the eyelets and the squatchy. <laughs> I, I love that you just fired that off. <laughs> In orange. Okay. The logo on the right-hand side is a square, almost like a National Parks pin with the Golden yeah, Gate is. Bridge, yeah. uh, you know, uh, stenciled into there. And it's just a two-tone, so it's very minimalistic, and I dig that. 
But then what they did is they put that into a white, very bold San Francisco, the SF, over uh, over top of each other as their traditional logo. But then the Golden Gate Bridge is kind of you know in there. So it's white, orange, on a black cap. Fabulous. Bold. Very nice. Very nice. Good choice. Thank you. Good choice. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I like now, the Academy. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my, here's my number four. Yeah. Okay, you ready for my number four? Oh, yeah. Okay. My number four is the Tampa Bay Rays. You're probably going to disagree with me on this, but I like this one a lot. Now, like you said, taking the whole hat into consideration here, that light blue, that powder blue yep. with the yellow looks awesome. I am all about a powder blue hat. And I'm not necessarily a San Diego Chargers fan, but that's one of my favorite things in the NFL, too, is their their powder blue with the yellow. Mm. And and it looks sharp. Like the... So it's a powder blue hat with the white TB, and then it has the sunburst kind of behind it. And it looks, it kind of stripes the way that it fits on the TB. It kind of stripes it. Yeah. yeah uh, it stripes the, the letters. But mostly it's that powder blue, and I think it looks really good, really clean. Really, I, I like it a lot. Huh. Well, I that makes a lot of sense to me, Brad, because that's my number four too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes well played sir no here's why i thought to myself with all of the powder blue that's happening with all the baby blue that's happening in major league baseball they are the only team with the you know the decided to be bold the to go along with it and i don't think this trend is going to hang out too long and i gotta have as much of it as possible while it's here that's part of why yep. i chose that one and yeah, everything you pan, said. I agree. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. I love that we always have one in the same spot. We do. On our list. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> okay. My number three. Are you ready for this? Oh, yes. My number three is the Seattle Mariners. Okay. Okay. Now, you have to assume that I'm going to have a Mariners hat on there as long as they don't have the S. Yeah. Because I'm so sick of the S. Yeah. <laughs> what they did was they took the... M with the compass behind it that they used last year. Last year, I think it was a. Uh, I want to say it was um, was a teal M with the with the compass rose behind it. But this year they had that underlay of the baseball with the compass rose, and you can see it throughout the M and the compass rose perfectly. Like it perfectly fits behind the M in the way they did it. Yeah, like it looks, it looks super sharp, really clean, and I wouldn't be sad or upset at all. If the Mariners use this as their primary logo instead of the S, uh, because I think it looks, I think it looks really cool. Um, just with the baseball and the compass rose, and like it depends on how you look at it too. Because if you look for the compass rose, you can see that more prominently. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the M more, M more closely, like dominantly, you can see that more prominent. So it's kind of one of those little optical illusion things, and yeah. I like the way they did it. It looks, looks really good. Looks cool. Probably gonna buy one. I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. That's awesome. My number three is the Chicago Cubs. Now, for those of you that know me, you know I dig me a baby blue or a powder. What is the color called? Royal, Royal blue. Royal blue? Yes, yeah. I dig me a Royal blue hat. I love it. Okay, it's mm -hmm. a really bold color. It goes with everything I own. It's never going to be out of style. It's always awesome. Okay, same with black. But mm -hmm. this is we get the bear, we get the bear cub crawl, you know, walking on all fours with the words, it, the bear is white, the words cubs is red inside the bear's body, okay? And then we mm -hmm. get the ringed C around the bear. I think it is stellar. It does look cool. You know what the bear kind of looks like? What? Looks looks a little bit like a cinnamon bear with the... <laughs> with the cubs in there yeah a little bit yeah <laughs> who doesn't love a cinnamon bear come on yeah, but you don't love a cinnamon bear you get out of town <laughs> look red white and blue will never go out of style it's always going to be an excellent color combination if you do it tastefully and if you balance the colors right it's never bad never yeah, no, that's true. That's absolutely true. I do, I do love royal blue and red. I love the Cubs colors, and I actually like what they did with that. Yeah, how they had the Cubs, how it worked out to have the Cubs inside of the Cub, 
Looks cool. So now let's transition, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and lead us off with uh, with your... So we're going to do our th- our three least favorite because just for time, we don't want to take up too much time because we could probably go off with these. So your third, your number three on your least favorite list. Everything from number six down. No, uh, it got real bad. Like I, I think <laughs> I've made that clear. It got bad. Uh, it gets fast. real bad real fast. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. It does. So, so then, you know, picking the best of the best was hard, but picking the best of the worst was gr- excruciating. Well, it's it's the worst of the worst, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, okay, worst of the worst. You're right. You're right. Thank you. So, I okay. I picked Anaheim, or whatever they're called these days. I picked the Angels as the number three, like my third, second runner-up worst. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's like a million reasons why. I love the red. I think the red is great, but they tried to fit an A with a halo inside an A with a halo. Who do they think they are? This is not creative. This is nothing (laughs) special. I can see what they tried to do there, but it's not fun. It's cheeky. It's cheap. And I'm like, no, you do not get any points from me. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And it's it's just funny that it works out that that's the way that the that the logo from the side was positioned i know that it, it happened to be an a within an a and it just <sighs> it doesn't look it doesn't look good no that would probably have been my number four on my list and is that visor blue or black what is going on okay tell me yours I mean, that looks like it's black i know tell me yours ah all right <laughs> mine is the kansas city royals mm. now yes i love royal blue um, there is a, a Kansas City hat that I like. I like the Kansas City with the KC with the crown on top. Sure. But I don't like the crown inlaid into the KC. Yeah. Um, it. I don't know what it is. It looks weird. Um, just, no, sorry. Mm-hmm. Don't. I don't like that one so much. Fair. Um, yeah, mostly it just looks strange. It doesn't quite work. Well, it's, it's but, imbalanced, I think, is part of the problem. Yeah, that's what it is. There's no balance to it. There's no it, balance. The colors are yeah. balanced well. Like they've got just like you don't want a lot of that yellow in the crown. Oh yeah. You want yeah, you no. want that to be a kind of a pop color, but that that's the problem with the Kansas City hat. I think it's imbalanced. Yeah, well, it's it's really thick through the middle, but then like the the things I don't know what those are called, the like prongs on the on the crown. Yeah, the round parts, yeah. Yeah, the part that goes up, it like it it doesn't it doesn't work. Yeah, it's really imbalanced because of that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's what it is. Is the balance is off? Okay, my number two. Number two. My number negative two or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta give it to Miami. Gotta go with Miami, and and here's the trend that I noticed is that teams with a thinner primary logo. So if they went with a front facing bolt, you know, the big logo, it the thinner it was, the harder time they had. So obviously with the Marlin, you know, they're not dealing with a great amount of space to work with to inlay a different logo, but what they ended right. up doing was so bad because what they're trying to do is show you the M, but what you end up with is this weird you get weird lines running everywhere. And it's it doesn't make any sense. It looks like some somebody put together a, a puzzle, right? With no not like not a jigsaw puzzle, just a straight edge mm-hmm. puzzle. And they were like, yeah. "Oh, let's piece this together." And this part goes here, and that's oh, that looks great! Yay! Hang it on your fridge. Yeah. Don't put it on a hat. Yep. Yeah. No, I totally agree. It it just it looks random. It, it's almost like they had to overlay the marlin with the overlay. It's so bad. It, it, well, cause because that's they tried what to they get that in, but it didn't work. Yes. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it doesn't work. Now, the colors are awesome. I love Miami's colors. I think yes. the color yeah, change was brilliant. A black hat is always going to look good. And those neon Miami colors, we have them on the shop because they're so awesome. So I dig it. I needed more red in this logo, in this hat. If they had done more of that coral color, would have been awesome, but they didn't. Yeah. And it's it would have been nice. Looks terrible. So to go, what's yours? All right. So mine is it's kind of funny. Like I was watching the video here as I was scrolling through because I, I've I've got this up on lids so that I can see exactly what we're talking about. 
and you can see the reflection of the screen in my glasses as I scroll. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed that a little bit ago. I was like, oh, that's neat. Nice. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> um, so my number two is actually the Giants. No way. You don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it. Tell me. I don't like it. Um, it does, like, I will say this. I do like the the, the two-tone eyelets and the two-tone squatchy. I do like that. But I don't like the logo that they that they used on the side. Um I feel like they could have used something else besides the Golden Gate Bridge and made it look better. Um, and you can't really tell, like, at first glance what that is inside the SF. True. And I don't like, I don't know. It's just like, I, I kind of looked at it, and I I don't know exactly what it is. But I just, I'm, I'm not a fan. I, I think I'm just not a big fan of the SF. Uh, and the way that they had to make it bold to make it actually work. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not into it. Not into it. Because it's real huge and loud. You know. Yeah, it is. It is really big. Which it's I really actually big. like about it, but I can see why you know you might disagree with it for sure. Yeah, I don't know, and it, and it might feel like the the weight of the hat is thrown off with the size of the logo. True. Yeah. Okay. But, sure. Yeah. Good argument. I think, I think that's part of it. So. No, I agree with you. Okay, are we? All get, right. I'm. I hope we agree on our worst of the worst. Well, let's take a break and then we'll find out. Oh. Hey, babe. I'm headed to concessions. Do you want me to grab you something? Yeah, anything, whatever you're getting. Okay, I saw a burger, I'll probably grab that. Mm, no, that doesn't sound good. Okay, I think there's barbecue, probably some nachos. Uh, I don't think I want either of those either. Um, but just get me anything. <sighs> what do you want? Uh, I saw a hot dog earlier. Okay, I can do that. Well, no. Couples may quarrel, but baseball is for lovers. Shop the Lovers Collection at 9plusus.com. baseball family <laughs> brad and i are just dying to know how many of you are catching our references particularly strongly <laughs> this evening um or this morning or what is friday night you know and but for you it's monday or whatever so if we're bringing you whatever day you're joining the show from the past okay <laughs> how does it feel being futuristic <sighs> Our our jokes that still funny three thing. days later. I don't know, <laughs> but we want to know. Please put it in the comments if you catch all our references. We won't tell you where they're from, because that's part of the game. Right. But we have been rolling, <laughs> rolling. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's talk about our. Should we start with our best of the best or worst of the worst? Let's go to the worst of the worst, then we'll go to the best, and on a positive note. That sounds totally reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the responsible thing to do. <laughs> okay, do you want to go first, or do you want me? Yeah, I'll go first. Okay. I'll go first. <laughs> All right, so this one, this one actually pains me, um, because uh, I love their regular hats. I love their new jerseys, uniforms, everything, the whole bit. I love their colors, but they used a logo that I don't like. And it's the San Diego Padres. Oh. Something about the swinging fryer, I just can't I can't get behind it. Just give me that give me the SD. <laughs> like, that sounds like should be uh, some sort of inappropriate thing to say. Give me the I SD. I know, that's why I hesitated. <laughs> I heard you hesitate. <laughs> I was like, no. Oh. We had the same thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man! But <laughs> don't let Gail like hear you SD say that. <laughs> <laughs> there it is again. Okay, <laughs> now I'm just okay. feeding them anyway. to you. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I I don't like the swinging fryer, and I don't like the way that the SD got behind it. I like the brown. I like the yellow. That's why I don't like the San Diego hat. Rig, what's your oh, least favorite? Oh, sorry. <laughs> wow, you that was efficient. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get I had to get out of there. I had to get out. <laughs> I still have the church giggles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend is not a word you might use to describe me. So my <laughs> my, my least fa least favorite of these is the Chicago White Sox hat. <laughs> 
What? <laughs> what? Are you serious right now? <laughs> yes. Oh, man, I love that Why logo. You, is that your number one favorite? No, it's not because there's others that I like more, but that's one of my favorite logos of the, the, the old school crappy 8-bit one or whatever. Whatever. Yeah, I love the 8 bit stick logo. figure one. Look, I don't I yeah. don't mind I don't mind the stick figure one. I just don't like the way they tried to combine the logos. It just looks stupid to me, is that's all. It does. It yeah, just I'll looks give you that. terrible. That's that. all I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. I'll give you that one. Because I don't bad. mind it. I just it's but I don't love it. I for sure don't love it. I just don't like the way they combined them here. Well, yeah, no, I'll give you that one. It doesn't, they don't look good together, but man, I love that logo with, when they do like the block letter socks yes. below it. Yeah. That should be their logo all the time. Yes. I love that. That looks good. With the that red. Yeah. No, it's good. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Super cool. Super cool. Okay. I feel like I just killed the buzz or something. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> all right. Okay. We're going to my number two. My number two. What, number two? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, good. I number, still have two, two left. Because uh, that was our least I favorite. Still... So your, my least favorite was the Padres. Your least favorite was the White Sox. Okay, okay go. So my second favorite, I'll say it that way. There you well. go. Um, it's well documented that I love everything the dynamics. Oh, do. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> That's mine too, bro. <laughs> yeah. Is it number two? Yes. <laughs> I literally threw my hands yeah, in the it air. It looks so cool. It looks so it cool. Does. Yeah, like they have the the regular A with the diamond back down the side, like it's a snake, and they implemented the the regular like head on. Um, the the snake logo. I mean, I don't know why I'm doing this. You're gonna be able to see the hat anyway. But I pulled my hat off the rack to show. <laughs> but no, they had they showed the they have that snake behind the A, and it looks so cool. Just to have half the snake's face with the baseball. Yep, awesome. it's awesome. It's awesome, and it's a black hat, and it's black, and the eyelets in the squashy yeah. are black. So yeah, everything. It's all black. It looks so sharp. It's, it's so clean. It's so clean. There's no turquoise in it. I'm a little sad about that, but I don't know where they would have put it. But the the Sedona red and that Vegas gold color, whatever, is just perfect. Yep. I think it's... And I'll be honest. Great. I'll be honest. It inspired my hat that I'm wearing right now. It's the United we, United we Fan hat. We put this together based on the D-backs colors. I'll be honest true. with you. That's a true fact. So... A yeah, true fact. A true, yep. a true fact. That's one of my favorite things to say. <laughs> Don't judge us. We know it's incorrect. Okay. <laughs> so since you blew mine too, why don't we go ahead and uh, reveal what is your number one favorite on the list? And I'm going to put down my okay. mug before I freak out because we have the same one, <laughs> I am assuming. <laughs> All right. We we very well might. Um my number one is the Milwaukee Brewers. Nope, that's not mine. Okay, cool. All right, oh, cool. Man. Okay, I dig right, that so, one though. Yeah, yeah. I love the mitt logo. Um, I think it looks awesome, and I like that on the side they have a baseball with what is that? Barley, wheat. <clears throat> yes, wheat. It's I don't. Know. It's barley. I don't. I don't know my grains. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> but it's a baseball with like wheat, wheat as the threads. Yeah. And it looks really cool. And then that is behind the mitt, and it looks really cool. And that navy blue and yellow looks so good. I want the Mariners to go navy blue and yellow. Man, they Man. used to be royal and yellow. They were royal and yellow, but I think if they kind of updated everything and went navy and yellow, like the yeah. Brewers, oh, man. It's real good, bro. I might be able to get behind that S again. Oh, seriously? <laughs> That's a hot take. That yeah. is a hot take. Yeah. Flaming. <laughs> Dude, I agree with you. I think it's slick. It, it didn't make my top five, but I did appreciate it every bit. I thought it was some of the lines were a little too messy for me, a little too busy. That was it. Otherwise, mm, the I color's great. It's balanced well. Just some messy lines for me. But otherwise, I thought it was great. So, All right. Yeah. My right. Number, one, number one. My number one. should. It's my opinion. It ought to be yours. Is that 
<laughs> it's the Tor- <laughs> Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah. It's so – talk about balance, right? Talk about class. Talk yeah. about bold. Talk about clean lines and appropriate use of color. If you can combine three different shades of blue and get away with it, you deserve lots of props. Now, let me tell you, for those of you not watching, for those of you listening on the podcast, it is a royal blue cap, okay? The eyelets and the squashy are all royal blue. Everything's the same uniform color. But they've got the maple leaf, the Canadian maple leaf in bright red, outlined in white, and then within the maple leaf, on the far left sort of, I don't know, finger of the leaf what do you call that i don't know but <laughs> that was my best attempt oh, I don't know. and you, you get the blue jay <laughs> peeking out through the maple leaf logo i think it's perfect and you, look at this the beak on the blue jay and the eyes are a dark dark navy and then the the blue mm-hmm. jay's head is that lighter blue and then the it's a different color than the cap itself yeah it's spectacular yep it's true. It really is. And I, I'll i say, I'll say I love, love this hat. The only reason it didn't make my list is because it didn't feel original. Sure. Because I, I, I feel like we see that hat periodically from them. Totally. Anyway, it didn't, it didn't feel new, but no, I love the way yeah, that looks. I had, and I it agree with awesome. you. I had to make that decision. Like, do we give it to them? Do I give it to them because it's not, because it's novel? Which is kind of, I feel like spring training hats are supposed to be novel, right? That's the point. Exactly. Yep. The point is that they're supposed to be fun and a little bit flippant. You know, they're just throwing mud, see what sticks kind of a thing. Yeah. And it and it's fun. It's casual, which, which mm-hmm. I think, you know, they do all, uh, uh, clearly they're all very casually making these decisions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, I I just think yeah. as far as color and balance, I think I like this one. Yeah, that does look really good, and and I'd probably buy it if I was Canadian or uh, <laughs> like the Blue Jays or something. But if I, I was Canadian or like the Blue Jays or something, <laughs> wow, there goes Blackjack Brad. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it does. Look, it looks good, though. It looks. It does I'll look great. Looks, I'll give you that. It looks, it looks awesome. It looks really and we're good. super grateful for James Paxton. So thank you, Canada. Um, <laughs> that's right. You know the collective <laughs> we. So, yeah, big maple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I I was grateful for him totally. when he was in Seattle. He did do yes. a lot of great things. A so. lot. Yeah. Um. So there's one thing with these hats that I wanted to talk about that um that we didn't get to to begin with. But I feel like we can visit it now, and it's the patches that are going to be on yeah. the back. So they have that team logo, like we like we talked about on on the side of the hat. But on the back, there's going to be a hat that's specific to the league that the team plays in in spring yeah. training. Um, you know, you've got you've got the Grapefruit League in Florida, which only makes sense. Citrus, everything, yeah. you know. And then in Arizona, you've got the Cactus League, which obviously, like I said. Corresponding Makes sense. Correct. Cacti in, in the Phoenix area. So what they did is they put patches for each league on the back of the hat. And I'm trying to filibuster as I look <laughs> on the website and try to find it because I know they're here. I'm just trying to find the patches. The Arizona that, league, that the Cactus won- League, is primarily a teal color. And that it's interesting because right. teal and orange, like a pastel peachy orange, are very common in the grapefruit and cactus league. And this year they've kind of inverted a little bit. So usually we see that teal turquoisey color in the grapefruit league associated. And this year mm-hmm. the the cactus league got a, a lot of teal in that patch and it's the inverse for the grapefruit league. They get a lot of that orange that we usually see associated with the cactus league. So um do right. you have it up? I don't. Okay. I'm still looking for it, but that that's that's exactly right though. Because if you looked at I, as I scroll through here, I'm looking at um, I'm seeing the patches from previous years, and yeah, the Grapefruit League previously yeah. was teal. Um, the last two years in the Cactus League was orange. That's exactly yeah. That's exactly right. Um, but it, it also makes sense to invert yes. them, because in the Southwest in Arizona, you've got a lot of the um, Native American culture and and turquoise 
is yeah. very popular, very common, very important, and it's then very important. In, yes, yes, very. That's the better way to describe it. Very important. Um, and then in Florida, you've Florida orange juice. I mean, come on now, <laughs> totally. So, so orange orange makes sense uh, in in Florida as well. Well, and they've chosen a grapefruity color. color. It's not quite orange. It's not all the way red. It's like somewhere in the middle, and it's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it uh, it does make perfect sense, and I'm still trying to find it. I mean, I, I know it's well, what, on here. I've seen it. I saw it when yeah, I Yeah, well, what they it. did, I'm just going off memory, but what I believe they did was they went with the state shape. So Florida gets the shape, and there's a, there's a grapefruit sliced in half next to, uh, I think they have FL or something on there, like, uh, you know, for the Florida League. And then they've got uh, on the – Arizona side, they've got the shape of Arizona, the state, and then a blooming cactus, mm-hmm. like a multi stock. What do you call a cactus thing that comes out? I don't know. A stock, maybe? I think they call arms. Them arms. Okay, call them so arms. you get this. Yeah, because that's like legit. Really? What so they you get are. this blooming. You think I know? I grew up in Utah. But you get this blooming <laughs> arm of, of cacti coming out of the ground. Um, and it says it's got the AZ on there as well. Um, and each patch has a little bit of orange on the Arizona side and a little bit of teal on the Florida side. Mm. But essentially, that's what it is. What I thought was interesting is that the um, the Florida patch, again, from memory, I think that the Florida patch is, is, has downplayed the palm tree, which they've featured prominently in years past. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I can't find it. I think you did a good job Thanks, describing man. it, though. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I looked pretty closely when oh, I watched duh. it. You know what I just You know what, what I should do? I don't know why I didn't do this before. I'm gonna click on a hat. Oh and go and, and we're gonna spin it, it around. around. <laughs> Cause it's on because yeah, it's on the back. Good call, bro. These are this is the kind of content you get when we don't want to make funky video <laughs> and we're not gonna edit things. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for all you listeners so. out there. We are available on YouTube. <laughs> That's right, and you can see it's, everything. It's we're at talking least about a, it's at least funnier, you know. But don't stop listening <laughs> to us just because you don't. You got to wait till you get, till you get on your computer and can watch YouTube because you might forget. So that would be terrible. So just keep going on your commute. That's right. So, <laughs> so okay. So the way you described the, that cactus, I was thinking it was a saguaro cactus. I don't know what kind of cactus that is. All I know is that it is any kind of cactus means business and you don't want to mess with it. Right. So it's a, yeah, it's like a multi blooming cactus that comes up. It looks a little bit like a blooming That's onion right. from, um, from Outback Steakhouse. And it has the, just AZ next right. to it in capital letters. And it is in that teal, more of a turquoise color yeah. than a teal. And I think that that is kind of a nod, like we've talked about to, uh, to the Southwest native American culture because of the importance of the, uh, of the yeah. turquoise there. And then, the Florida, the, the Grapefruit League, has two grapefruits next to one another. One of them is ah, cut in yes. half, and then and then it has the FL next to it. So it actually, it, I think the the logos this year are great because previously, um, I can actually grab for for everybody watching on YouTube. I have a Mariners hat from 2017 yeah. spring training when they first did the the silver trident, and you can see the palm tree. It's um, it, oh, well, the cactus the, league! Oh, cactus sorry, league. I'm a Yankees fan. <laughs> that was the year they did like those the the interstate signs. Yeah, that's signs. right. So it's so it's like an orange interstate sign says AZ 2017 with the Major League Baseball logo between the in the middle of the year. Um, but uh, I love the hat. Not crazy about the spring training patch. Um, I am glad that it has it on there, so it can kind of commemorate right. the year. Um, but I I really like these ones. I'm crazy about the new ones. They look really good. Brad, really quick, tell me what do you think of the full mesh? hats like but they're not mesh you know what i mean they're not mesh trucker hats they're they're oh yeah yeah it's like it's like i guess i don't know what they're calling them but yeah i love them actually my mariner's hat that i grabbed down it is it's uh like that mesh style um my d-backs hat is that same one because that's a spring training hat from uh from last year it doesn't have the patch on it but it's a spring training hat and then my owl's hat as well I have a, the navy blue batting yeah, practice. Yeah, the batting one. practice. Yeah. That's mesh. I really like them um because they're lighter weight than the actual like polyester wool, wool hats. Yeah. And they're they're more flexible. They they fit to my head faster. Ah, okay. 
So, so yeah, no, I really like them a lot. If anybody's on the fence, I suggest getting one and trying it out. Um, yeah, they're they're really comfortable. Well, like just allow me to climb right off the Great. fence here. <laughs> Do it. Go go get yourself one, just... Brig. The only thing is, if you don't like uh, you, if you don't like fitted hats, um, I don't know if they come in in snapback. I'm looking at one right here. It's like a dad a dad hat with they like don't the buckle come back. tall crown snapbacks in the mesh. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think they did. So you'd have to get a you'd have to get a tall crown, full uh, full fitted, and uh, but yeah, like I said, it's it's really comfortable. It fits your head really fast. The shape the shape fits your head. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm a traditionalist, and I'm I'm kind of against it. I don't know why. Every time I tried one on, I'm also a snapback guy. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and you know, I I wasn't crazy about the mesh. I got that Mariner's hat. Mel got it for me for my birthday, and I was kind of like. Oh man, I didn't know it was coming in yeah. mesh this year. <laughs> you know, but I I got it, I put it on, and within like two wears, it was perfectly ah, fitted cool. my head. Good, good. So, yeah, so those I wear those hats a ton, a ton. They're cool. super comfortable. Good, good. So, but speaking yeah. of shopping, Brig. <laughs> hey, don't forget it. Yeah, tell don't us about forget to shop? jump on the shop. I got my uh, baseball and chill T-shirt on tonight. Um, this is one of ours. It's in the pop culture series. If you're interested in how we break things down, um, we also I'm wearing this hat. This is this is one of my newer ones that I just ordered from myself from the shop, and it's this is the uh, home of the brave hat. This comes on t-shirts and stuff in a distressed pattern, but on the hat it looks much better without the distressing. So uh, stitches cleaner. Anyway, we got this one um, on the shop. Home of the Brave. It's part of the Americana series. You can get any of this and more at 9plusus.com. That's where we have all the best stuff for uh, game day and every day is what we say. So I wear, I literally wear them every day when I'm not at the office. So I, you know, I'm always in a t-shirt and a ball cap. And if I can, I pick ours because we have great stuff. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> True. I love it. I love it. But you can also. No, just, oh, sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying? Admitting that I'm speaking truth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but go ahead and stop by baseballtogether.com as well. You can read about baseball. You can listen to the podcast. You can watch the podcast there. Um, I I want to get something up there this week. I'm going to try to get make make the time get something up there for you. Um, but also when I go to spring training, I'm going to be at spring training in a month, and every night I'm going to try to get something up there for you about. Uh, the spring training experience uh, because it's a blast. I think everybody should experience it if you can. It's fantastic. I'll be talking about that. I'll be recording some podcast stuff while we're there, so we'll have some fun stuff to listen to afterwards. Um, but don't don't forget to like, subscribe, rate, rate, and review the podcast. Tell your friends about us. And baseball family, we will catch you next week.